Greetings. This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. Today I'd like to say something about desire, because it's so important in your lives. Desire is the engine that drives your activities. But what is the engine that drives desire? It is thought. Thought drives desire, specifically beliefs. If you believe you need a new car to be happy, you'll desire a new car. If you believe you need a new mate to be happy, you'll desire a new mate and begin looking for one and be open to one. That openness, that intention, will likely create a relationship. Your thoughts, your beliefs are very, very powerful. The problem is that you are either unaware of or unconscious of so many of your beliefs. To have such a powerful thing driving your behavior, but not be aware of that, is bound to cause difficulties in what you create in your life. You are meant to be conscious creators of your life, so you're meant to become conscious of your beliefs. But how can you become conscious of them if you're identified with them? Being identified with your beliefs, meaning believing your beliefs, doesn't necessarily mean you're aware of them. When you're identified with your beliefs, you do their bidding, without being aware of what's causing you to take action. It's important to be aware of what's causing you to take action. It's important to be aware of your desires and the beliefs that create and drive those desires. Awakening to your true nature is essentially about becoming aware of what you're thinking, believing, and desiring, and also gaining enough distance from your thoughts and desires to be able to evaluate if something is a worthy desire, belief, or pursuit. So many of your beliefs and desires are not worthy of your attention or action. So much time and energy are wasted by following desires that are not that worthwhile or fulfilling on a deeper level. These are the ego's desires, which won't bring fulfillment, although they'll give you a sense of doing something and being somebody. So they do give you a sense of identity. However, pursuing the ego's desires will not fulfill you on the deepest level because those desires are superficial. So how could they? The ego desires power, security, specialness, prestige, recognition, and popularity. It wants to be on top, above others. How can that be fulfilling when that is so far from the truth of your unity with all? You are not meant to be separate. Although you're meant to explore your uniqueness, you're also meant to discover your unity with all. You're not actually separate. So when you behave in ways that make you more separate, like trying to become more special than someone else, that will not fulfill you, because you're not meant to be fulfilled by specialness. You're meant to be fulfilled by unity, love, service, growth, and peace. You will never find true happiness by following the ego's desires. And the truth is that most of the thoughts and desires that come through the voice in your head are the ego's desires. So when you allow the voice in your head to determine your actions, you'll lead a superficial life. You may get some of the things you want, because when you pursue what you want, life will often give it to you. Not always, but it will often give it to you just to show you the results of that choice. So this is how you learn. You eventually learn that the ego's desires are not fulfilling, not that worthwhile. And then you may go looking for what is the meaning of life, what will fulfill you, what will make you truly happy. When you start asking those questions, you'll surely find the answers, because there are deeper desires. Those deeper desires don't come from a thought in your head. They come from a movement within your being. 
you're moved to pursue things that will bring deep fulfillment. That's a very different way of living, to live from a place of what you're moved to do on a deep and silent level. You may express these deeper desires in words as you talk to yourself or another, but these desires didn't show up in your thought stream. They didn't show up as, I want, not initially. So be careful not to give too much weight to the desires in your thought stream. I want this, and I want that. Take a good look at the desires in the thought stream. Are they worthy of your energy and attention? Will they make you truly happy? Now there's nothing wrong with going after those desires. Everyone does to some extent. What determines your happiness is how much you're also spending your energy doing what's truly fulfilling. If that's occupying the majority of your activity, you'll be happy. Then it's fine to pursue that new car or some other thought, since doing so won't take you away from your deeper fulfillment. Those lesser desires will be seen for what they are. Then it matters less and less whether you have what the ego wants. That's the beauty of it, because no matter how much or how little you have, everyone can be happy, because everyone can fulfill the deeper desires. It doesn't take money to fulfill these deeper desires, it only takes a willingness to learn, to grow, to love, to serve, to explore, to discover, to be open, and to create. Doing these things costs nothing, and they're most fulfilling. So there's no excuse to not be happy. It's possible to be happy with very, very little. I would certainly agree that being happy is more difficult when your basic needs are not met. This is very challenging indeed, and yet it is not impossible, as there are many, many examples in your world of people who are in delight and in deep gratitude for the little that they do have and for the love of those around them, for that is where the greatest fulfillment lies. It lies in loving others, in caring for others, in being of service to others. This is one of life's most important lessons. It can take quite a while before someone learns this. As long as someone is listening to the egoic mind, this isn't easily learned, because the egoic mind doesn't suggest that you serve others, or even that you love others, unless the ego has some other agenda in loving someone. As long as you stay involved with the egoic mind, its desires, and its agenda, it will be difficult to find the greatest fulfillment. But it is there, and it is there for you to find. It is the hidden secret, the open secret, for you to discover. So there, now you have it, the secret to life. The secret to being happy is to follow your deeper desires. One of the most important desires is the desire for love and unity. Whatever causes you to love more deeply, more openly, and more easily, go in that direction. It's very important that you go in the direction of your love and joy. If you only do that, you'll lead a good life. Love can never lead you astray. It will attract everything you truly need. Love is an attractive force. It is the attractive force in the universe. When you align with love and express that, the universe will give you all you need, all the inspiration, wisdom, courage, and strength. You all have these available to you at any time, but you must realize you have them. It's a little like Dorothy and her ruby slippers, isn't it? If you don't realize that you have these great gifts within you to tap, then it's like not having them. 
You have everything you need, but you won't know that if you remain involved with the thought stream, because it will tell you that you don't have what you need, and it will keep you from seeing what you do have. The ego is a trap. It is the challenge that you, the hero, is meant to overcome. You are not left alone in this difficult life without resources. Everyone has the same resources. Not everyone has the same intelligence or the same physical strength, but everyone has the same capacity for courage, inner strength, kindness, love, compassion, and patience. Everyone has those capacities, but only some of you are aware of these resources and use them. So know this. Know that you are all well-equipped to have a wonderful life, one full of love, peace, and goodness. But it's up to you to make that happen, to desire that. The desire for those things, love, wisdom, compassion, peace, these are deeper desires. When you align with those, you will certainly receive what you desire. Your intention, your desire, is very important. Your intention is everything. Intend love, intend peace, intend goodness, intend a full life, a fulfillment beyond your wildest imagination, and it will be yours. Do not be afraid to receive the bounty that is available to you. Receive what the universe has to offer. It freely gives to you, but you must want it. You must intend to receive what it has to give. When you align with love, peace, and goodness, and your actions flow from there, you'll receive everything you need. This is how you're rewarded for finding your way back home. You will receive what you need. It is a natural law that as you give, you will receive. Move out of the ego's negative realm. Its desires just keep you running around in circles, never being satisfied. Find that which is within you that will make you truly happy and follow that. Be the loving being that you're meant to be and that you can be, and all else will be given unto you. This is our promise. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your openness. We appreciate you aligning with us. We are with you always.